On today's Faith versus Culture, we're talking about faith, marriage, and parenting, and how to keep God at the center of all of it. That's coming up. To have a sex before you marry is a bad idea. Don't tell me there's no such thing as gun violence. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. There are problems of sin and habit that cannot be solved outside the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, welcome to this week's episode of Faith vs. Culture. I'm Trey Goins Phillips, joined, of course, by our CBN Managing Editor, Dan Andros. Dan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Trey. Well, it's good to be here. Good to have you here and also good to have our guest today. Many of you will recognize her from Duck Dynasty, uh, Corey Robertson. Thank you so much for being here with us. How are you? Hey there. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Well, you know, for people who who might not know some of your story, and I know that there is a lot there, but before we get into talking about uh, the topic of the day, which a lot of it is going to center on the blind, the movie that that really tells your families, the Robertson family's story, the origin story. Tell us a little bit about yourself and and your journey to to faith and relationship with Jesus. Yeah, well, um, I was really. Um, blessed to be born into a family of faith, um, have generations of faith in our family. And so just kind of grew up with it. My, my granddad actually um, wrote songs for the church and, and published a song book, which led to a publishing company that our family owned. And so, you know, just grew up in and around it my whole entire life and so grateful for that. Um, but definitely I think that um, a big impact on my family, my, my family and my personal life and my faith is a summer camp. We have a summer camp called Camp Shioka that our family has always supported. And I'll just never forget being out there. And I think that that's a, a lot of people's story, but um, definitely just the impact when you go out and you're in nature and you're in a place where your faith can just kind of become its own. I think that was a big part of a big part of my life and my life story. Well, your family, Corey, obviously has been out there in the public for some time now, and especially since the blind, it's, you know, sort of re put you guys out there in, in the focus, uh, heading to um, uh, Great American Pure Flix now, uh, where you can see that movie. But what's that lo- been like for you, having your family, a lot of your family, a lot of the things you guys are going through or happen to you in your life, just being out there in public? How's that been? Yeah, we're from a small town, West Monroe, Louisiana, so never ex- really expected that. But I think <laughs> looking back, we can see, and probably everybody has this in their life, and you look back, you can kind of see how God just kind of prepared us, gave us a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and prepared us for what was to come. We are, um, our family just kind of has always been open books. We have kind of a very open door policy. We have a lot of people in and out of our home. So whenever the show started and we had this film crew descend upon our house and our space, it um, somehow kind of felt natural. And we were um, happy to welcome them in. And um, and just really everything we do, whenever we decided to do the show, we just kind of sat down to the family and we're like, um, I hope this is for God's glory. Any spotlight that comes to us, we're going to point directly to him. And we actually, you know, prayed together as a family and say, God, if this is not for you, if it does not... Um, further your kingdom, if it's not good for you and good for our family, then take it away. And um, God blessed us in it and kind of carried us through. And we did not do it perfectly by any means, and we <laughs> still don't. And um, we do not live perfect lives, as you could uh, as attest to the movie. Um, our lives are not perfect and have never been, but um, we um, continue to just try to point people to Him. Um, and, you know, that scripture about it's in our weakness, that His strength is made known. And um, there's another one in Revelations that we thought about so much throughout this this film is that um, Satan is defeated through the power of our testimony, the the love of Jesus and the power of our testimony. And um, that's how we try to live our lives. 
Hmm. You know, something that I think resonated with so many people when Duck Dynasty was on the air is was the focus on the family. Uh, and then also in this movie, of course, the focus on the family and how it's grown as the Lord has, has kind of done the work of convicting and changing. Could you talk a little bit about how even in the midst of being in the limelight, you had camera crews, like you said, following you around all the time. Your story has now been been out there for everybody to see. How did you and Willie go about protecting your marriage and keeping God at the focus of your relationship? Yeah, I think, um, you know, family is God's design. The All of scripture, you know, the, the church is referenced as a family. The um, Jesus is the bride of Christ. God is our father. So there's so much reference to family. It's, it's part of God's design. So no wonder the evil one would try to come in and attack that in our lives and try to take that away from us. And, you know, for us, um, our marriage has not been perfect, just like anybody else's marriage. But I think the one thing that we have going for us is that we both love God, we both love Jesus, and we surrender our lives to him. And so those moments when it's tough, we just turn back, you know, turn back to him and turn back to one another. And um, this movie, you, it has, there's a lot of themes in this movie. And, and, but I think one of them is that moment of marriage. Your marriage can change and can be saved and can um, be, be changed forever. Because there's a point in the film when Phil and Kay's, they're separated. Kay kicks, Phil kicks Kay out of the house. It looks like their story is over as a family. And, um, but God comes into it and everything changes and it changes for, for Phil and Kay. It changes for their boys who, who are, um, just little boys at the time. It changes for our family life and our grandkids and for generations to come. Wow. That's awesome. How, you know, given how culture is going and your family's obviously deep faith, as you were just talking about there. How do you look at that dynamic with the way the world's going and your guys' story and your faith? How do you engage with that? Well, I think one, we engage by saying like, this is what God has done in our lives. It's just that, it's that saying like, you know, you can look at our lives and, um, whenever we started Duck Dynasty, we didn't, you know, it wasn't necessarily a faith show <laughs> but so people would say to us like oh are you gonna like are they gonna you're gonna be able to tell say that you're christians on the show we're like they can't get around it because it's who we are you know and so the hope is that people might see our story and hear our testimony and say like what why why is it different like why do you seem to have like love joy peace patience kindness and we're like that's because we have the spirit living in us. And then we can tell, tell you a little bit more about what Jesus has done for us. It's not because we're so great. It's because we have the spirit of God living in us and we try to live our lives that way. And so I think, um, you know, being countercultural is to just say like, Hey, we love Jesus. We're trying to follow him. We're doing our best. And also we love people. You know, I think the the scripture talks about how um, we'll be known by our love. And sometimes as Christians, honestly, we're not known by our love. We're known by the rules or we're known by, you know, our judgments or we're known by this or that. But I think the more that, you know, we as believers and followers of Jesus are just known by our love, um, the, the spirit of God is going to impact our world in ways. And I've, you know, you're starting to see it. I think you're starting to see that shift back because you're saying people are looking at the world and the messages that the world is telling them are like, something doesn't add up. This actually doesn't work. This doesn't actually live to the abundant life that we're promised, the happiness, the all the things that we're promised by living this life. Um, so maybe, maybe there is something to um, this message of Jesus that we need to come back to. Mm. Yeah, for sure. I think the tide is turning. I think people are starting to question, as you said, these hollow promises from the world, and hopefully uh, that will turn people back toward the gospel. So there's a lot more to discuss, but we're going to fit in a quick break right here. We'll be right back with more Faith versus Culture. Stick with us. Welcome back to Faith versus Culture. I'm Trey Glance Phillips here with Dan Andros and our guest today, Corey Robertson. You know, Corey, 
obviously the blind is heading to a uh, great American pure flicks that'll be available starting March 22nd. Uh, but before that, uh, duck dynasty was a show that kind of took, I think the, the reality TV world, uh, by storm. It was super popular, has remained a super popular, uh, reality show. I think just to play devil's advocate, a lot of people would say, you said that it wasn't started initially to be this Christian TV show, uh, but y'all just were who you were. You're a Christian family, and that uh, clearly shown through in the TV program. Um, but I think people might look at, at that and say, you know, Hollywood, the reality TV world, the media world is just so lost and so dark. Why would you spend your time in that world, why would you go into the entertainment industry? Could you maybe talk about that, how you've used your platform to leverage it for good? Yeah, that's so interesting because we did honestly get a lot of pushback from Christians when we decided to do it. Um, you know, well-meaning people were like, don't go to Hollywood, you know, you'll get divorced, your kids will end up on drugs. <laughs> like, don't you know that's what happens? And, you know, we just really felt that like, God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. And we, um, you know, know that like he says he will be with us wherever we go. And so we just ask God's favor on us, his protection on us. And we felt like God says, like, go, <laughs> go into all the world. And so whenever anybody asks me like, oh, should I get into entertainment as a believer? I'm like, yes, we need more people in entertainment. We need more light in that. And I think for me personally, it really just kind of opened my eyes to the power of entertainment and the way that it is shaping our culture. I mean, the statistics are just like staggering when you see how much time we are spending consuming some form of entertainment, whether it's podcasting or, or music or television or film. or And um, so we are, you think about that much time, we're spending, you know, maybe an hour and a half in church <laughs> on Sunday, but the rest of the week we're spending 11 hours a day consuming some form of entertainment. And so if we, if we want to, if we kind of close our eyes and say, oh, this isn't affecting us, this isn't shaping our culture, I think we're really blinding ourselves to that. And um, whenever our show happened, we saw, we had this, you know, this is a funny comedy little show, but we had a prayer at the end and the way that prayer impacted people's lives, people would come up to us with tears and say, my husband now goes to church because he saw real men who love Jesus. And, and our, they would say, our kids will not let us eat before without saying a prayer now because of your show. Mm -hmm. And so we just saw so powerfully how entertainment is, is shaping people and changing people and how it can move people. And you look at back at Jesus and he told, told parables, he told stories because stories do move people and people relate in that way. And so um, after the show ended, we decided we, you know, we felt like, okay, God put us into this place. We want to do more with this. And uh, we started a production company called Tread Lively and The Blind was our first film. So it was a little intimidating to come out with your first film and also be your family story because you're like, all right, you got we got to get this right. But um, we were so grateful for the response and um, the way it impacted people. And um, yeah, it's it's been it's been amazing. And we feel like God's hand's been on it. And we just continue to ask him and um, ask him to be with us and um, to lead us and guide us and close doors that are meant to be closed and open those that are meant to open. And um, here we are. Yeah, that's great. And I think. Speaking about being impactful, especially to like younger kids growing, your kids are grown now. And, you know, look, parents are struggling with so many issues that are being voiced out there with, with sexuality and race and politics. What advice would you give parents wanting to sort of protect their kids, but still equip them and have them engage in the world? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we need to teach our kids that God gives them a spirit of power. I remember whenever... Our daughter Sadie got asked to do Dancing with the Stars. I think that was the moment for me as a mom that was like, oh, okay. Like, is this, should I send my, she was had just turned 17. I was like, do I send my 17 year old to Hollywood? Is God gonna protect her? What is this? Is this, is this the right decision? And a, a friend of mine who's a godly woman said, don't be scared for Sadie. She has a spirit of God in her. She is gonna be a light for God in Hollywood. And she said, the devil's the one that needs to get scared, be scared. And it was just this like moment to say like, no, like we need to teach our kids, put those deep roots in them, um, know that they can walk this earth with strength and power and courage because they have God living in them. Um, but also we need to, we need to protect our kids. You know, there is, you know, I remember this whole 
social media thing came up like as really right as we entered Duck Dynasty and our kids were teenagers and not knowing how to handle that and not knowing what it all would look like and, and feel like. And now we, of course, know a lot more. I tell our kids, I think you're going to do even better with your kids and how to handle it because you know more, although things are changing just so dramatically and rapidly. But I do think as parents, we need to be aware that like when you open your kids up to the internet, you're opening them up to the world, to strangers, to all the things. And so we do need to protect our kids from that. We need to be be aware of that and be aware of the things that they're consuming. Like I said earlier, I think it opened my eyes to like how entertainment is shaping our culture and it opened my eyes to the things that I'm consuming. Like how is that shaping me and how is that shaping my kids? The things that are we have on our television, the things that we're looking at on our screens, on our phones, or the music that we're listening to. If we can say it's shaping people for good, then we also need to say, oh, it's shaping people for evil as well. And um, I think that for too long, we as kind of Christians have just um, sat idly by and and not not um, consider that and realize the way that um, the entertainment and the things that we're consuming are, are impacting us. Yeah, for sure. Like, I think it's easy to have these conversations and we can kind of keep it in the abstract. Like, you know, we could talk about it's important to keep God first. It's important to to protect our eyes and our hearts and our ears and, and minds from, uh, from things that could harm us. But then practically, we don't always follow through as believers. I think sometimes we we drop the ball and forget like, okay, now we actually have to put our nose to the grindstone. What are the steps that we can implement? What steps practically did you and Willie put in place raising your kids? And what practical steps uh, to help you as a family, as a nuclear family, keep God first, would you recommend to other families? Yeah, I'd love to talk about that. But first, as you, that reminded me of this um, conversation I had with a young guy, and it, it really impacted me and changed me. I wrote about this. I have a book called Strong and Kind about raising kids um, of, with character. And um, I write this in the verse of my book because I remember this conversation. So it was a young kid. He was like, young, I say young kid. He was in his 20s. And um, he had gone through a tough time where he had, he was raised in the church, but he had gone through a time where he had just turned away from his faith and just didn't even know if he believed it anymore. He was, um, you know, living a life. He had gotten involved with drugs and alcohol and all that. And he had turned his life back to Jesus. But I said, why do you think you did that? Why do you think you kind of went off the rails for that time period? And he thought about it for a second. He said, well, like, I think um, the adults around me that I saw um, said they valued one thing, but lived that like they valued something else. And I was like, whoa, that is like Mm -hmm. so convicting as a parent because yes, our kids are watching us and the things we say, we can say like, oh, we value, um, you know, the things of God and all this. But when we live like we value like money or prestige or fame or school, (laughs) you know, what they, what school they get into, all these things that sends a message to our kids of what we really value. And so I think, um, most importantly is just that it's just modeling that and, and looking within yourself and saying, okay, like, what do I actually value? And what am I, what am I saying? I believe, but and what am I living? Like I believe, and that's a hard thing. That's a convicting thing as a parent. Um, as far as practically things that we did, I think part of it is just talking to your kids, having a lot of conversations and being really open and honest and about um, what's going on in their lives and in your life. So we just leave that door open to talk. Um, I think you can do things like social media, not till they're older. That's not something that we did very well because we didn't even know, I think at that time, didn't know some of the dangers of it. So we weren't as careful as I think now looking back, we would be at this point. Um, no phones, in the, no screens in their room. That's That's a big that's a big one. And, um, as, as some things that we noticed growing up, like you did, we didn't even know, Oh, you can get on the internet on your Kindle. You can get on your internet on your, on your, um, whatever, all the different ways that kids can access internet access. So it's just no screens in the bedroom that all happens downstairs and in public with, so things like that, I think are, are really important to protect your kids. And, they won't like it. It's not fun to have rules sometimes, but <laughs> but it's worth it. And they'll thank you someday later. 
Yeah, you know, I don't have kids, but I can see Dan, who does have kids, nodding yeah. along to everything you're saying. Yeah, so. I'm hanging on to that promise, Corey, of they'll thank me later. I am <laughs> hanging on to that. Yes. As my kids have gab phones with no internet and, and all that other stuff, so. Yeah, good move. Yeah. Stick with it. Stick with it. Yeah, for sure. Well, Corey, thank you so much for being here. The movie is The Blind. It'll be on Great American Pure Flix starting March 22nd. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Enjoy talking to y'all. All right, stick with us. We will be right back after this break to wrap up this episode of Faith versus Culture. Stick with us. Welcome back to Faith versus Culture. Dan, that was, uh, I think, such an important conversation to have. It's important whenever we can talk about practical steps, but it's great to have somebody who's been through it, right? This is a family that so many of us, if you watch Duck Dynasty, you saw them walking through so many different issues in life, and they stay true to their faith, and they're still out there talking about it now with a movie uh, kind of about their family's origin story. So often in Hollywood, it's like you see somebody go in, and Hollywood is like this machine that then spits them back out and they look nothing like the wholesome person that they did when they first entered Hollywood. But this family has stuck with it. Yeah, they have. And uh, I I liked what she had to say about um, their time and the impact and the reason why they're doing it to try to bring glory to God and that their prayer about if if this is not what you want, then take it away. And uh, I think they're doing a good job, you know, pointing to God in the midst of all that they're trying to do. And you could see that with, you know, with Corey's children, you know, Sadie Robertson's doing a lot of uh, good stuff out there, putting a lot of good faith content out there. And, and so that's great. Like, that's awesome that they could do that in the midst of that. And that's obviously a work of God, right? I'm not trying to give them all the credit in the world, but uh, I think when we have those practical steps from someone who's, you know, kind of been in the midst of Hollywood, where there's a lot of temptation and you see how, things have turned out i mean it's certainly worth listening to stick with us we'll be right back to close out this episode of faith versus culture be right back That is all we have for this week's episode of Faith versus Culture here on the CBN News channel. Thank you so much for joining us for that conversation. Uh, if you want more from CBN News, you can go to cbnnews.com uh, and you can subscribe to our Quick Start podcast, uh, also our Quick Start newsletter, so you never miss any of the news uh, of the day. So like I said, that's all the time we have, though, for this episode. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you.